بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از دی پرزنٹیشن فار دا ٹوینٹی سیکنڈ نائٹ آف تراوی وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو تھری سوراز سورہ شورا نمبر فورٹی ٹو سورہ حامیم سجدہ نمبر فورٹی ون سورہ المومن سورہ نمبر فورٹی سورہ حامیم سجدہ فورٹی ون اینڈ سورہ شورا فورٹی ٹو رسپیکٹولی سورہ مومن پارٹنرز ود سورہ از زمر از زمر از تھرٹی نائن اینڈ المومن از فورٹی وی آل ریڈی ڈان سورہ از زمر ان آر لاسٹ پرزنٹیشن دا ٹو سوراز ور ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا سبجیکٹ آف وارننگ دا ڈس بلیورز as well as giving good news to the believers as indeed is the subject matter of uh, the entire Meccan surahs of this group. The affirmation of Tawheed, the unity of God is what is discussed in both surahs. The only difference that we find in this pair is that while in the case of Surah Az-Zumr, uh, there is a positive affirmation of uh, the unity of God, Tawheed, in Surah Al-Mumin that we are going to do tonight. It's uh, more of admonition to those who reject this message. Uh, the starting of the two stu- surahs are almost the same. Uh, what we find is that while in Surah Az-Zumr, there was this emphasis on wisdom. Uh, in Surah uh, Al-Mumin, it's more on the knowledge of the Almighty. Uh, we'll also see that from Surah Mumin onwards, There are uh, seven surahs, starting from Surah Mumin and ending at Surah Al-Ihqaf, which all begin with Hamim, uh, seven surahs, and they're all called Hawamim, that is, surahs that begin with Hamim. So let's start with a discussion on a few passages of Surah Al-Mumin. I start with the very first three verses of Surah Al-Mumin. Uh, The surah is of the first of uh, the Hawamim, as I said. Hamim tanzilul kitabi min Allahil azizil azizil alim. This is surah Hamim. Uh, it's a revelation of the book which is from God, uh, the exalted in might and uh, the knowledgeable. Ghafir is Zamb, the one who forgives sins of people and accepts the repentance of humans shadidil iqab severe in punishment zit taul the one who possesses the possessor of immense potential and control la ilaha illahu there is no deity except him ilayhi al-masir and towards him is going to be the return the return of uh, the entire human race. A few verses later, in verse number 7, we find that the Almighty is telling us about the prayer of uh, the angels. The angels also worship the Almighty. They also pray to Him. And uh, this surah tells us that prayers that the angels made was الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشِ The Almighty first introducing, introduces them. Those angels who carry the throne. وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ And those who are around them. Now what does that, does that mean? We don't know. It's a metaphorical expression about which the Almighty has asked us not to go beyond what the literal apparent meaning is. Not try to find out what the reality is. They... يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ They exalt God Almighty with praise of their Lord. وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ And they truly believe in Him. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they also seek forgiveness from God for those who believe, those humans who believe. رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا And what they say is, Our Lord, your 
mercy and your knowledge encompasses everything faghfir lil ladina tabu so forgive those people who repent wat tabu sabilak and those who follow your path waqihim azab al jahim and save them from the punishment of hell fire they continue their prayer by saying rabbana o our o our lord wa adkhilhum and enable them to enter jannat e adnin the paradise of eternity allati wa'attahum which you have you have promised them wa man salaha min aba'ihim wa azwajihim wa zurriyatihim and also enable those others to enter the paradise who are their parents or their spouses or their children who were righteous too inna ka antal azizul hakim indeed you are mighty you are wise uh, this mention of the fact that in the paradise the almighty is going to allow humans to live with their families is mentioned thrice in the quran this is one passage there is another that's surah in surah rat surah number 13 and there is yet another mention in surah tur surah number 52 we move on to verse 16 of uh, surah al mumin wherein the almighty is telling us that on the day of judgment yawma hum barizun when they will come forth they will appear la yakhfa ala allah minhum shay'un the almighty will know everything nothing concerning them will be hidden from god he will ask limanil mulkul yawm or could it be that some angels would ask whose kingdom sovereignty is effective today who is the master of the entire existence today the an- the answer that that they will give and others would give is lillahil wahidil qahar it is god's allah's the one and the prevailing that is even though god's uh, sovereignty is effective functional even today yet because of the fact that he has chosen to uh, let us have liberty and freedom so that uh, we could be tested we are allowed to do things which go against his his uh, expectations but on the day of judgment everything is going to happen the way he would want them to happen verses 18 and 19 they say wa anzirhum yawm al azifa al azifati iz al qulub lad al hanajir kazimin and warn them o prophet of the approaching day yawm al azifa when hearts are going to be at the throats filled with distress mal al zalimin min hamin hamimin for uh, the wrong doers the unfair wrong doers there are going to be no friends wala shafi nor any intercessors yuta who are going to be obeyed so they are going to be all by themselves to account for their deeds ya'lamu khainat al ayuni wa ma tukhfi sudur he knows that what deceives the eyes that is whatever eyes deceive bama tukhfis sudur and he also knows what lies hidden in the hearts so he would know everything and then he will take his decision we move on to verse 26 which is the main theme of this particular sura uh, and the name of the sura is given after this particular theme which is surah mumin there is a statement of uh, a believer that has been mentioned in this passage i read from verse 26 the almighty says wa qala fir'aun 
and Pharaoh said, Zaruni, leave me, let me, Akhtul, to kill Musa Moses. That is, leave me aside and let me kill him. Well, yeah, the Rabba. And let's see. He should call for the help of his Lord. In Niyakhafu, I have a fear. Ain yubaddila dinakum. That he's going to change your religion. Ain yuzhira fil ardil fasad. And that he's going to cause mischief in the land. So I'm not going to spare him now. Waqala Musa, in response to it, Musa alayhi salam, Moses said, Inni ustu bi rabbi wa rabbikum. I have sought refuge in my Lord and your Lord. He is your Lord too. Min kulli mutakabbir from every arrogant la yu'minu bi yawmil hisab who doesn't believe in the day of accountability. Wa qala rajulum mu'min and thus said the believing man min ali fir'aun the man who was from the uh, people of Pharaoh, he was the one who had been given uh, the opportunity to speak because as yet he was not as yet identified as somebody who was with uh, Musa salam. So he had hidden his uh, faith and because of that reason, he was still there to be able to do what he did now, as is mentioned in the Quran. Yaktumu imanahu. He had concealed his faith. Ataktuluna rajulan. He said, Are you going to kill a person? An yakula rabbi Allah. Simply because he says, My Lord is God, Allah. Baqat jaakum bil bayinat. Even though there have come to you clear signs. Clear signs of the fact that he is from God. He is a messenger of God. Mir Rabbikum from your Lord. Vain yaku kaziman. Look here. If he is a liar, fa'alayhi kazibu, then his lying, cheating is going to go against him. He is going to bear the consequences of it. Vain yaku sadiqan. However, if he is truthful, then Yusipkum baadul lazi yaidukum. Then you are going to receive some part of what he is promising you, warning you against. In Allah la yahdi, indeed God doesn't guide man hua musrifun kazab, those people who go beyond limits and are liars. So this believer, you know, came out openly in support of Musa alayhi salam and uh, his, uh, his presentation, his uh, uh, message of God. He goes on to say, Ya qawm, O my nation, lakumul mulkul yawm. Today, it's your kingdom, your rule. Zahirin, you are dominating filard over the land. Faman yansuruna, well, who is going to help us come to our aid? Mimba Silai from the punishment of God in Jana if it comes to us. Qala Firaun, Firaun responded, Maurikum, I, I, I don't show you illa ma'ara except what I see myself. Mama ahdikum, and I am not guiding you towards anything illa sabila rashad except the right way. So, on the one hand was this believing person and on the other hand was uh, Pharaoh trying to deceive his people into believing that he was on the right track. Now we move on to verse 45 where the Almighty is telling us about an important aspect of uh, the happenings uh, in the story of Musa alayhi salam. He says, فَبَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّيَّاتُ مَا مَكَرُوا It so happened that God protected him 
from uh, the evil that they had plotted against him. Wahaka bi ali Firaun and Pharaoh and his companions were overwhelmed, enveloped, sul azab by the worst punishment. What was that punishment? The Quran says, Annar. It was ultimately the fire. Yoraduna alayha guduvam washiya. They were they are exposed to it, that fire that they are going to ultimately be thrown into. They are exposed to it. Guduvam washiya, morning and evening. And on the day of uh, judgment, day the hour is going to appear. Adkhilu ala Firaun. It will be said, enter, O Pharaoh and your companions, the people of Pharaoh, Ashad al Azab, to an even more severe punishment. In other words, uh, Pharaoh and his followers, they were drowned. And before the day of judgment, they are being shown uh, the uh, abode, the fire in which they are going to be thrown into after the day of judgment, which is what we normally ascribe as the punishment of grave, the punishment that is being given to some people uh, after their death, before the day of judgment. It's a punishment that is inflicted upon people who face uh, who received the message of the messengers of God and yet they reject it and therefore their punishment begins from this life and continues in uh, the life of Barzakh and uh, will be uh, given to them in a physical material form after the day of judgment. We now move on to the next surah, surah Hami Masajda along with surah Ashura. Surahs 41 and 42, they together form uh, another pair. And uh, this pair too, like uh, all pairs of uh, this particular group of surahs, is talking about Tawheed, unity of God and its uh, affirmation. And through this presentation of Tawheed, the Almighty is uh, warning those people who are not who were not accepting the message and is giving good news of success in this life and the next one to those who believed and persevered with uh, the understanding and the way it was showing. The only difference between Surah Hami Masajda and Surah Shura is that in the case of the first Surah Hami Masajda, it's more of admonition and in the case of uh, Surah uh, Ashura, people are attempted to be uh, taught, helped to understand uh, what this Tawheed is and uh, what are its arguments. Uh, this pair of surahs is uh, uh, the one that was revealed at the time when the Prophet, may God's mercy be on him, was going through the phase of uh, Hijrat and Barat. It was disassociation from the people of Quraysh and other disbelievers and the preparation of migration was going on. Uh, we first go for the uh, next surah that is Hami Masajda and I read the first uh, few verses of it. Hamim, this is surah Hamim. Tanzilum min rahman rahim This is a revelation from the one whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is forever. Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu This is a book whose verses have been explained. Quranan Arabiya It is an Arabic Quran. Liqawmi yalamun For those people who want to know, who want to learn. Bashiram manazira this book is the one that gives good news and is also the one that warns. So, most of them have uh, ignored it, turned away. So, they don't listen to it. 
they are not listening to it and therefore they are not understanding the message. Uh, from here we move on to verse 19 where the Almighty is telling us that <clears throat> Imagine the day when the enemies of God are going to be gathered close to the fire, around the fire, for whom you own, and they're going to be assembled and they're going to be counted so that each and every person is present and then ultimately thrown into their punishment. Hatta iza ma jaahua. It will happen until such time that they are going to go close to it. Shahida alayhim sam'uhum wa apsaruhum wa juluduhum. When they are going to go there, their hearing ability, their ability to see their eyes and their skins, they are all going to testify against them. Bima kanu yamaloon, testify against what they used to do. In other words, these eyes, uh, these ears and the, the skin that they used to employ for whatever they did in the worldly life are going to be testifying against them. So they will be surprised, they will be shocked and they will say, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ They will say to their skins, لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا Why are you testifying against us? قَالُوا Their skins would respond, Allah. God has given the ability to speak. Allazi, the God, antaka kulla shayin, who gave the ability to speak to everyone, to every object that was able to speak. Wahua khalaqakum awwala marra. And he is the one who created you in the first place. Wa ilayhi turja'oon. And you know what? You are going to be made to return towards him. The verse... Uh, is 21 of uh, this surah and then we uh, move on to 24. Uh, the next verse says that this discussion is going on and the limbs of the body who testify, who testify against these criminals would go on to say وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَطِرُونَ أَنْ يَشْهَدَ عَلَيْكُمْ سَمْعُكُمْ وَلَا أَبْصَارُكُمْ وَلَا جُلُودُكُمْ And you didn't make any arrangements to hide uh, your uh, deeds to, uh, for them not to be able to testify against you. Neither your hearing ability, nor your ability to see, nor your skins. So you didn't do anything to hide what you are doing from them, for them to not be able to testify against you. But the fact of the matter is that you used to think, assume that God does not know most of the things, most of the deeds that you perform. That is what gave you the confidence to do the wrong that you were doing. We move on to verse 26, which says, And so said those who disbelieved. Look here, don't listen to this Quran. And make noise while it is being read out. So that you are able to overcome it. That is, these disbelievers were convinced that this book is so impressive, its message is so profound, that anybody who would listen to it would get influenced positively. So the uh, ploy, the plan they devised was that we'll make noise when the Quran is going to be read out by the Prophet so that people are not able to listen to it. These are the kind of cheap tactics which all people who do not want to know what the truth is, nor would they want others to know about it, they employ such uh, uh, such tactics. Uh, 
Uh, we move on to verse 32 where the Almighty is telling us that uh, angels would descend upon those people who were, uh, who were good. And this is verse 30. Inna lazina qalu rabbun Allah. Indeed those people who say that our Lord is God, Allah, thumma staqamu, and then they persevere, they remain steadfast. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَلَّا تَخَافُ وَلَا تَحْزَنُونَ Angels are going to descend upon them. That is, on the day of judgment, before the ultimate verdict is implemented. And they will say, don't fear, nor have uh, any grief. وَأَبْشِرُوا And get this good news, بِالْجَنَّةِ Of the paradise, أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَدُونَ which you were being promised. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We were your supporters, friends in the worldly life as well. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ And we are going to continue to be your uh, help, your supporters in the next, next life as well. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ And you will have therein whatever you will desire. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ and you will get therein whatever you will ask for. Nuzulam min Ghafoor Rahim, and this is going to come as uh, accommodation, as uh, welcoming gestures from the one who is forgiving and merciful. And then verse 33 goes on to tell us <coughs> about the Prophet, may God mercy be on him in particular. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ Who can be better in speech than the one who calls, invites others towards God, towards God's way. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he himself does good deeds. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says that I am amongst those who submit. I am inviting you to the path of the Almighty and I am doing what I am inviting you to do myself as well. وَلَا تَسْتَوِلْ حَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّيَةُ Look here, what is good cannot be equal to what is evil. اِتْفَى بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Therefore, repel evil with what is good. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ So what's going to happen is, that the one between whom and you there was enmity, Kannahu Waliyun Hamim, he is going to become a very close uh, friend of yours. He'll become a real good friend. But this wisdom nobody can get Illa Sabaru, except those people who are steadfast. And this wisdom of doing these good things, nobody can get. Illa Zuhazin Azim, except those people who are very fortunate, who have been able to conduct themselves in an excellent manner. And while you are doing this, if Satan comes to you, Nazgun. Uh, with an evil suggestion and he'll do it. He'll come to distract you from the good work that you're doing. First is Billah, then seek refuge in Allah, in God. Innahu who was Samiun Aleem. Indeed, he is the one who hears everything. He is the one who knows everything. After Surah Hamim Aj Sajda, the next surah is uh, Surah Shura. Uh, Surah Shura is a partner of Surah Hamim Sajda and they don't both form a pair and uh, in this particular Surah the Almighty is making people understand the, uh, un the concept of Tawheed, the unity of God uh, more than the kind of uh, stern warning and admonishing that was happening in the previous surah. 
Uh, I read from the first three verses. It belongs to the family of surahs, uh, which begin with Hamim, but it also has, in addition, in addition to Hamim, three other letters at the beginning. So it says Hamim, Ain Sin Qaf. This is Surah Hamim, Ain Sin Qaf. Kazalika Yuhi Lai. That's how Yuhi Laika. That's how does he reveal the message to you as he did to those who came before you. Allahul Azizul Hakim. God the mighty, the wise. That is, he has always been revealing his messages to his prophets, his messengers. And that's exactly how he has done it to you. In other words, what you are receiving is no different from what other other people received before you. We move to verses 7 and 8 of the surah and we find that the Almighty is saying and that's how like the others we have revealed to you we have sent down our revelation to you Quran and Arabian in the form of Arabic Quran. Litunzira Umm al Quran. So that you warn the people of the mother city, that is Mecca, the central city of the Arabian Peninsula. That was the status of Mecca then, and it's the status of it even now. The Almighty sent the Prophet, may God's mercy be on him to warn the people living in Mecca in particular and the surroundings in general. وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا And those who are living in its surroundings. وَتُنْزِرَ يَوْمَ الْجَمْعِ لَا رَيْبَ فِي That you warn them about serious consequences on the day when they are going to be gathered. لَا رَيْبَ فِي About which there is no doubt. It is bound to happen, bound to come. فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ a group amongst, amongst people is going to be in the paradise of Fariqun Fis Sayyid, and another group is going to be in the hellfire. So it's upon you to decide to choose as to which of the two paths you, you want to undertake. Because this result is bound to happen. It's something that you cannot avoid. There is no doubt about it. We move on to verses 13 and 14, which uh, are uh, very important verses. Uh, subject matter has been talked about by a number of scholars, particularly in uh, the 20th century. And there have been many uh, Muslim movements which were undertaken on the basis of a peculiar understanding of this verse 13. The Almighty says, Shara lakum min ad deen. God, He has ordained for you in religion. Ma wasabihi nuhan. What He asked, enjoined nu to do. Wallazi awhayna ilayh. And that's what we have enjoined upon, upon you as well, O Prophet. We have revealed upon you as well. Wa ma wasayna bihi Ibrahima wa Musa wa Isa. And uh, that is what we enjoined upon Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. What was that message? An Aqimuddin, that you stay firm on religion. The religious message that has been given to you, be firm on it. Continue following it. Wala tatafarraku fi, and do not make any divisions in it. Do not make any distinction between one part of God's religion with another. So the Almighty is telling us that all the previous prophets and the most important of them have been mentioned. No, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa 
and the last Prophet Muhammad salam. They've all been given God's law, his message, and it has been given with the, this clear uh, understanding, expectation that this message has to be followed. And no distinction is allowed to be made between one part of God's religion and another. Kabura al mushrikina ma tadruhu milay. It is uh, very burdensome on the dis on the polytheists, the path towards which you are inviting them. It's very hard on them. Allahu yashtabi ilayhi man yasha. God chooses, selects, and chooses to come close to Him, whom He wills. Wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib. And the principle is that he guides towards him those people who get inclined towards him, who turn towards him. That is, if people are interested in coming close to God, he guides them. So that's the message of verse uh, 13. Then we move on to verse 19 of uh, Surah Shura, where the Almighty is telling us that Allahu latifun bi'ibadihi. God is kind to his servants. Yarzukuman Yasha. He provides provisions, sustenance to whom he wills. Wahuwal Qabiyul Aziz. And he is powerful and mighty. Mankana Yuridu Harthal Akhira. So in the worldly life, the Almighty has decided to provide everybody with what they need. But when it comes to the uh, Next life, whoever desires the harvest of the next life, Nazid lahu fi harthihi, we increase from him for him in his harvest. Man kana yuridu dunya, and the one who desires the harvest of this world only, nuktihi minha, we give him from thereof. Ma lahu fil akhirati min nasib, and they will have nothing in the share of the next life. So that's a choice that has been given to people. And they are expected to um, make sure that they are striving for the success of the next life. Verse 41 of uh, Surah Shura is uh, the next verse that we'll do. The Almighty says that, Wala manin tasara And uh, the one who is taking revenge after he has been treated unfairly. These are the people who will not be held accountable. They will not be blamed for what they are doing. In other words, the Almighty is saying that if somebody is not treated properly and is taking revenge to the extent that maltreatment was inflicted upon him, hurled upon him, then that revenge, measured revenge is, is forgiven. Uh, the ending part of the surah is talking about the fact that these uh, polytheists and disbelievers were asking the Prophet as to why is it that they don't receive this message. Uh, they would also like to uh, talk to God Almighty. So the Almighty's response, they are demanding direct communication with God. Tell them, It is not proper for a human to uh, communicate with God, except that he should speak to him through revelation. God doesn't speak directly to humans. It's either revelation that is revealed, Varai hijab, or from behind a partition, God talks to his prophets. Aujur sila rasulan, or he sends his messenger, his angel. For you hiya so he reveals the message by his will, uh, whatever he desires. In nahu aliyun hakim, indeed he is most high, exalted and wise. 
And likewise, O Prophet, we have revealed upon you Ruham min Amrina, inspiration of our command. Ma kunta tadri mal kitab wal iman. You were not aware of the law or belief. Walakin jalna hu nuran. However, we made it a light. Nahdi bihi man nasha. We guide through it whomever we want to. Min ibadina from amongst our servants. Wa inna kala tahdi ila siratim mustaqim. And you are the one who guides towards the right path. May the Almighty enable us to understand his message properly and may he enable us to follow it as best as is possible.